A standard caster card here in version 42 has been Thaumaturge. It has a really interesting effects, two passives, and some stats that make it really compelling choice. Well, what does the math say for this card? Yellow, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a Paragon Guide. I am Silfen with another math behind the scenes look here at Thaumaturge. So guys, what is it? It's a seven knowledge, knowledge card, costs seven knowledge and is in the knowledge affinity and grants you some power and some maximum mana. You might notice if you are familiar with a lot of the cards, that's not necessarily as much stats as some other seven point, seven uh, attribute point cost cards, but you'll see in a moment why. Now, it also comes with two passives. Yes, that's right, two passives are quite interesting. The first one is Empower Mana. You gain power equal to 1% of your maximum health. There was other cards, previous version 42, that was based on your max mana, then it was changed to your current mana. Now it's back to maximum mana. So whatever your maximum mana is, it doesn't matter what your current mana pool is at, if you used all of it or not, it doesn't matter. You simply gain power from 1% of your maximum mana. The other one is called Overflow. Gain four maximum mana. You just increase that th that maximum pool whenever you deal damage to an enemy hero up to a maximum of 300 mana. So you can only gain 300 maximum mana through Overflow. It doesn't matter if you reach that and you keep hitting heroes. It doesn't matter. You can only get 300 max mana. And there is an internal cooldown, meaning you can only gain four maximum mana from hitting an enemy hero every four seconds. You can't, you know, uh, Twin Blast's Ventilate is ability damage, and it's just damage anyways, and it hits like, you know, I don't know, ten times a second. You can't just... You'd never use Thaumaturge on Twin Blast anyways, but I'm just making the point. You can't. There's simply four seconds in between when you gain that four maximum mana. Now, when we get into the juicy bits, we can see something arise. Now, this first comparison is pretty darn simple. It's just maximum mana versus the power you get you, you get from it through the empower mana passive. It's 1%. You just remove some zeros. It makes a lot of sense. 100 mana gives you 1 power. 1,000 mana gives you 10 power, etc. etc. All the way down here to... I went down to 3,000... If you have 3,000 maximum mana, you gain 30 power, and that's a lot. That is really quite a bit. So here in the early game, you know, you're getting 5-6 power. You can't get Thaumaturge anyway, so it doesn't really matter. You can maybe get Thaumaturge around here, so you get about 8-9 power. You know, in the mid-game, in in the mid in the mid game, you're getting 10. And then, if you simply try to get as much man maximum mana pool as possible, hey, you can start getting some pretty respectable numbers. We will be doing comparisons, try to see what Thaumaturge is, is, it is like compared to other cards a little bit later. Now this comparison here is a bit trickier and more interesting because we have to deal with that second passive effect called Overflow where we gain maximum mana per hero hit. Now this is damage, hero damage hits, how many times you hit the hero versus the maximum mana you gain from those hits. The power you gain through that maximum mana through the other passive and then the minimum amount of time possible to get that because of that four second cooldown. So there is there is a there is a minimum time here uh, that that it takes to get those the, the mana and that power. Now as you can see this is pretty simple in itself as well. Three hero hits turns into 12 maximum mana, which 1% of that is 0.1 power, which then times the four second minimum time in between that is 0.2 or a fifth of a minute in order to get that. As you can see, we can get, we can get 108 mana through 27 hero hits, uh, giving us 1.1 power and 1.8 minutes. If you were to exactly hit somebody every four seconds uh, in order to do that. And as you can see, the minimum time to get that 300 maximum mana is actually really not that. It's five minutes. Like if, if in a theoretical world you were able to hit somebody every four seconds, it would only take five minutes. That's pretty good. 
I mean, 300 max mana? Get three power? Hey, I mean, for just having the card on, that's pretty darn cool. Now, this is different, though. What you see here is I've added two seconds onto that base for second cooldown. Say you're just not able to hit somebody, and you, you just, you know, there's two seconds elapses in addition to that cooldown, and you hit somebody there. And then you can see the overall time to get that amount of mana and etc. So now the five minutes becomes seven and a half minutes if you were to take two seconds in between and you can see four seconds in between so you're doubling kind of like that internal cooldown it takes 10 minutes all the way up to 17 and a half minutes if there was 10 seconds if 10 seconds was to go by uh, between b b after that four second internal cooldown so what I did here is I took an average time between the minimum and the six second interval in between there. If you're going to take Thaumaturge, you're going to most likely be harassing the enemy, the, the enemy player, because, well, you got it, right? That's part of the card. You kind of got to harass somebody, uh, deal damage to them to get that. So I'm kind of assuming that you're more likely along here. This is probably un very unrealistic. Well, plus 10 seconds, now you're probably going to try not to do that. So I took the average of these here, and you can see that on average, I think you should I think you should be able to get 300 max mana through Thaumaturge in about 8.8 .8 minutes. Probably more likely 10 to 8 minutes, 9 minutes, somewhere in there. So about 10 minutes, hey, just under 10 minutes, you got 300 max mana and 3 power. Pretty darn cool. Well, now we have to compare this card to others. Uh, because it's a card and you have other options. We simply gotta know what our options are. And in this list here, we can see that I have, uh, I've, I've taken, I've, 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 cul I've culminated, my goodness, other similar seven point cost cards and up. Seven and up, up to 13 attribute point cost cards. Kind of left red zone alone. Um, and kind of compared them to the minimum empowered mana that you would need the minimum base mana pool you would need to equal the power that these cards give you and the minimum overflow or hits cabbage or hero hits and the average time it takes to equal the mana and the mana regen roughly that the other cards give you so i'm basically comparing i'm saying what is the minimum amount of maximum mana you need and the minimum amount of hero hits you need to come to make Thaumaturge equal these other cards. A big part of this though is I simply cannot include the passives and actives of a lot of these cards. I didn't, I didn't include any passives or actives. And that is why when you see here, you guys can pause the video and look at this for yourself. That's why I've added plus 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 being like Malik Nasher gives you a tremendous damage increase, 4% extra damage her ability hits on somebody like Egan Scorch. This goes through the roof. You sit like, I can't possibly assume any any damage from that. So what I've done is I've said you need at least 1100 base mana pool to equal the to, to make Thaumaturge equal the power that Malik Nasher gives you. But from the passive and from Malik Nasher, you need way more than that. You need way more than 1100 mana. To equal the effect it has probably not that much actually probably not that much because four percent eight percent even if it's eight percent of a Gideon rock for example uh, you know eight percent of what 700 is seven times eight oh my goodness uh, 30 whatever 40 40 ish whatever my my I'm, it's terrible because I'm terrible at that even if it's 40 that's 40 so you would need what you need 40 more power, which is 1%. You need 4,000 mana. See? So, exactly. Like, you, I simply cannot assume things like that. I mean, that's why I've had to do it like this. The interesting thing, the interesting thing about this is that the mana, the mana portion of this is surprising. Thaumaturge very quickly like look at this hero hits so nine plus plus way more than nine hero hits and way more than 1.1 minutes but for a lot of them thaumaturge beats out a lot of these other cards in the mana and kind of mana regen department very quickly 
very quickly. Uh, and it gives you tremendous resource in that department while being fairly okay at comparing the damage of Thaumaturge to the damage of other cards. Again, a lot of these passives, I didn't include these passives and actives. So I think we'll, 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 tr we'll try to take that in into consideration later. All right, Sylphen, that was really complicated. What the heck can we say about Thaumaturge now? How do we compare this all? Well, here it is. To make Thaumaturge e equivalent to your average 7 to 8 attribute point cost card in just those stats takes about 600 to 800 maximum mana and about 9 to 12 hero hits or 1.1 to 1.4 minutes to develop, right? Because it takes time to develop those hits. Not including the passive inactives, though, of those equi of those equivalent cards. So, in a very in just the stats portion of Thaumaturge, it doesn't take that much. It takes 600 to 800 maximum mana, and barely any time to get those hero hits in order to in order to equate Thaumaturge to those other cards. Not bad, not bad. Now. A 10 to 13 attribute point cost card takes about 900 to about, on average, 1,425 maximum mana, and way up, way up, because of some ridiculous, amazing cards out there, maximum mana, and about 1,200, uh, and about 12 to 27 plus, and way more, hero hits, or 9, 9.8, oh, that was, that was a, that's a, that's a mistake there. Uh, to develop so basically not very long at all to to develop again not including those passives and actives so it really doesn't take long guys for thaumaturge to equate to the base stats of a lot of these high cost cards um and i find that really really quite intriguing it does take about eight to ten minutes though to get seven attribute points right off the bat in the beginning of a game it takes about 10 to 8 minute mark by the 8 to 10 minute mark you should at that point have about 7,000 gold that you have received um not including that 1,000 base gold so what can we say then about the early game the mid game and the late game a 7 to 8 attribute point cost card would could be developed Around the 13 to 16 minute mark, mostly through the base mana pool. As you can see, you can very quickly, if you kind of focus on a little bit, get that get that maximum mana uh, from hero hits really quite quickly. But your base mana pool through hero levels, this it's actually what deal it, that's is actually what gives you the most value and. By the 13 to 16 minute mark, you'll have a 7 to 8 attribute point cost card developed. Well, great. So you're kind of, you actually have a legitimate 7 to 8 attribute point cost card because Thaumaturge starts off as a bit of a weaker 7, uh, seven attribute point cost card. Now, what about further than that? What about after the 13 to 16 minute mark? Well, a 10 to 13 attribute points, point cost card could be developed around the 20 to 23 minute mark mostly through your base mana pool very interesting a lot of games and around the 25 minute mark so that means that thaumaturge basically acts like a big card now while thaumaturge takes time till till it takes takes time to the late early slash early mid game to act like another similar seven attribute points cost card it can develop into a 10 to 13 attribute points cost card by the late mid slash early late game. So while it maybe hurts you a bit when you immediately equip it, it doesn't take much time for it to actually act like another similar seven attribute points cost card, but then it can develop into much more of what it actually is in the late mid and early late game. So what this does is it basically means that Thaumaturge can free up attribute points in the late mid and early late game to spend on higher cost end game cards while still being a fair end game card itself. Yes, it doesn't have amazing passive, um, you know, amazing uh, passive or active effect, 
but at least it acts like the stats of a end game card itself. The stats aren't absolutely amazing and like holy holy crap, but at least it's actually quite fair. It's a good end game stat card. Hey, that frees you up to go into another high cost late game card that can probably make up for the difference. So, by synergizing with the deadly mana gem that gives you two maximum mana per minion per enemy minion kill and mana flow acolyte which gives you point, uh, half a percentage point more more base mana when you uh, w when you spend points into knowledge extra power and value can be extracted from these cards gems and resources so basically it all kind of compounds itself you take a resource mana and then you get power from it. But then you also get more mana from it because you're hitting enemy heroes, which also gives you more power. You have cards that gain in power just from just from existing and, and, and from doing its things, and a gem feeds into that, and it's kind of a one whole feedback cycle that's absolutely amazing. So there you guys go. What do you think, guys think of Thaumaturge? I think the last two points here is kind of the whole crux the whole the whole crux of it basically thaumaturge frees up attribute points in the late mid and early late game that you can spend on other higher end game cost cards while still being a good a, a fair mid, late game card as well if you can synergize with other cards like mana flow acolyte you keep mana flow acolyte and thaumaturge and just go for a crazy end game crazy end game card maybe red zone i don't know i don't know what you're doing you can hey it can be pretty tremendous so let me know down in the comments what you guys think of thaumaturge did i miss anything if there's anything that you guys notice or have any tips or other perspectives let me know down in the comments as i would love to learn from you and i would hope that everybody else learns from you as well please like this video if i liked it dislike it if you dislike it share it the community and of course guys subscribe if you'd like to support me and what I do here on the channel, then head on over to my Patreon account where you can make a monthly pledge to help me do what I love. My Amazon affiliate link is also in the video description where any shopping you do supports me in the channel while not adding any cost to you whatsoever. You can also check out my Discord server link if you'd like to join a fun and respectful Paragon community and also visit my own website and merchandise store where you can pick up a shirt just like this and support the Global Education Fund charity. And like always, guys, stay optimistic and positive.